All right. I'll be covering sections 6, 8, and 6, 9, which are pure imaginary numbers and complex numbers. And so firstly, we have to think about what is an imaginary number and what's its purpose. You know, I was once created in order to fulfill the negative out of two solutions found in the context of a quadratic equation. Previously to that, any numeral present in a radical that was negative were just left undefined and they weren't dealt with within inside the equation or where the equation had parameters set to real numbers. They just didn't interact at all. So in order to allow these imaginary constructs to be formatted harmoniously with real numbers, I was set to the square root of negative one so that when the value, was, when the value is squared, it would equal negative one. Uh, a value with tangibility, a number that could have interaction and perform operations with real numbers, and those accounts are actually in actuality are, co are called complex numbers or complex number equations. But before we get into that, into those proceedings, you must understand the traits of I. And so we'll go on to talk about that as of right now. So as you can see up on the little placard that we had, or the little sheet of paper, I equals, I equals the square root of negative one, as I said. But as you can see right next to that, we had the cycle of I, starting with I to zero power, and anything to zero power, as you know, equals one. I to the first power, as you know, square root of negative one. And then we have I squared. And this is where you see that it can become a tangible a number that actually can have interactions with, with supposed real numbers. That, because um, when, two, when two roots of the same, of the same uh, number or the same value are combined, they, they come out of the root and then they become the number themselves. And then well, moving on to I3, we can see that we can see a trend that you can use the previous iteration of I2 times I, which equals I3, in order to get your answer because we already know that I2 equals, or I to the, to the second power, excuse me, equals negative one, and then negative one times I is just the opposite value of I, so we would put as our solution negative I. And then now moving on to I to the fourth, we can just use I2 times I2, and that equals I to the fourth, and which is negative one times negative one. And as you know, when negatives, a negative times a negative equals a positive, and there we go. And also in addition to that, we can talk about how you could set these exponent, ex exponents to extremely high values and you could still find, you could still um, follow this trend of the exponent of the first through the fourth power. You can follow that cycle throughout, no matter how high you go. So let's say you go to 100, you could use, you could still use i to the fourth because, you know, um, you could put i to the fourth inside a parentheses and then outside of it you could put it you could exponent that to the 25th power in order to reach your answer which would ultimately be one so you know just keep that in mind that you can use your multiples no matter what the exponent is it could be extremely ridiculous yeah and so now we will be moving on to a little transition break Now we're back. So now we're going to talk about pure imaginary numbers. And as far as pure imaginary numbers are concerned, they're really just multiples of i. So and um, multiples of i. And as you can see, our equation is five uh, i inside of parentheticals to the second power minus, and, and that's pretty much what we have as of right now. Now keep in mind that five i in itself is actually i to the uh, to the um, Square, um, square root of five, and that, that's actually the the initial the initial form it holds. And so, as you can see in this equation, subsequently, I just do five i times five i because this, the second power um, multiplies through a reiteration of itself. And then, nextly, we we combine like terms because you can't combine imaginary terms and real terms together. And so now we have five to the second 
times i to the second, and we know i to the second is negative one. So from there on forth, and we know what five to the second is. And so after that, subsequent to that, we get 25 times negative one, and then our answer, or our solution, is the opposite of, of 25, which is negative 25. And there we go. And we'll be moving on real quick. We'll do another trans quick transition. So now we're going to move on to complex number equations, but first we have to talk about um, the variable z, and z is basically the sum of real and imaginary numbers combined, or a complex number equation. And so if you ever see it, just know that z is referring to when those two are, you know, intertangled, you know, when they come together. And so now we'll be moving on to, um, you know, simple operations in arithmetic when it comes to complex numbers and equations. And so as far as addition is concerned, we can see our equation of negative, 20, uh, negative 28 plus 6i in parentheticals minus 24i in parentheticals as well. And so now we're going to want to add like terms. And then we know that negative 28 isn't the same as 6i or negative 24i. So we, we can't really combine those terms at all. And so what you're going to do from there, you're just going to add like terms, like I said. And then you'll get negative 28 minus 18i, and that'll be your, your solution for that. So pretty simple, pretty easy. Now moving on to multiplication. Multiplication is no harder either, simple as well. And so as you can see from the equation, it's um, in parentheticals 5 minus 3i. And then the other equation that's being multiplied, is, uh, multiplied by from the previous statement, is in parentheticals 7 plus 2i. And so what you would do is from there you would end up foiling them. And by being foiling, I mean multiplying or distributing them out. And so at the end of that, you would get 35 plus 10i minus 21i minus 6i to the second. And we know i to the second is negative 1, and so that would make the 6 a negative 6, actually. And a minus negative 6 is actually a positive, so the next transformation would be for our equation 35 plus 10i minus 21i plus 6, because two negatives equal a positive. And then your conclusion would be 41 minus 11i. And see, we're just still following the same, we're following the same routine of you know combining like terms. And also in addition to that, I would like to add that you have to, at the end of each of your equations, you shouldn't be ending up with a a plus bi format. And that's all I want to say for this slide as of right now. And now finally moving on to the operation of division. This is probably as when it gets most complex. <laughs> yeah, I guess that could be a pun. <laughs> okay. Alright, so moving on to division now. Uh, first you're gonna wanna um, you get well, let me address the equation. The equation being three plus two i divided by four minus three i. Now you you might be wondering why I'm multiplying next to it four plus three i divided by four plus three i. And that's basically the conjugate of the denominator. And what the conjugate does is it negates the it negates the imaginary components within the denominator, so that when you get to your final conclusion, the denominator doesn't mingle in a sense with with um, with the numerator, the, just the final product or not product, but the final solution. So after that, you're going to want to distribute, you know, foil, you know, multiply it out, and then you get 12 plus 9i plus 8i minus 6 over 16 plus 12i minus 12i plus 9. And that's where you can see where our conjugate cancels out the imaginary numbers. And that will get us to zero once we continue on. So from there, you're going to want to combine like terms. 
So you, comp you combine the 9i the and the 8i, and then you get 17i, and then you combine the 12 minus 6, and then you get 6, 6 plus 17i. And then as far as the, um, what's in the denominator is concerned, the 12i minus 12i equals 0, and the 16 plus 9 equals 25. And so you would get 6 plus 17i divided by 25. And then finally, you're just going to want to put it into a, B, a plus bi form. And that would be 6 over 25 plus 17i. And you see it's just, you just um, separate the imaginary and the real terms, I mean, but except you put the, um, the, the denominator under each of them. And so that's pretty much it for um, division. And um, what else do I want to address? Um, I didn't do subtraction because it's basically the same. You just follow the same rules. You just don't combine like terms. And that's pretty much it for imaginary numbers and um, complex numbers. So uh, thank you for watching.